Today, we're going to talk about log scales. Firstly, what is a log scale? And secondly, why on earth would you use one? So firstly, what is a log scale? So a typical scale on a chart is linear, and that means it increases by a unit of addition. So on a really basic chart, you might see a scale that just goes up by one. One, two, three, four, five. Very straightforward. But a log scale is non-linear, and that means that it increases by multiplication. So a very common log scale is actually 1, 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000. Log scales are used in very specific circumstances. So a couple of examples that you might know of are the Richter scale, which measures the Richter scale, which measures the severity of earthquakes, and the pH scale, which measures acidity. But then the question is, why would you use log scales? There's a couple of different circumstances that inform whether you should use a log scale. So the first one is log scales enable you to show a big range of data points on a single chart. And that's particularly useful if your data has outliers. So on a typical linear chart, um, you would actually have a cluster of data points, a big gap, and then outliers. But if you use a log scale on that chart, it actually shrinks the gap so you can show a bigger range and it remains easy to understand. The second example is when the underlying data itself is exponential. So one example of that is share price data. So share prices on average increase on an, at an exponential rate, kind of looks like this. There are two reasons why you might want to use a log scale. And the important thing to remember is log scales don't have negatives. So if your data has negative values, then you cannot use a log scale. You'll have to transform it somehow first. Now, it could be a little confusing still. I get it. You know, this kind of theory is very hard to understand. So what I'll do now is I'll go through a couple of examples and I'll show you what a chart looks like using a linear scale and compare that to using a log scale. And then you'll hopefully have a better idea of why log scales are useful. So the first reason you might want to use a log scale is outliers. On the left hand side, you can see a chart with a linear scale, and this chart shows annual salary. Now James, he earns a lot of money. I'd say James is the CEO. He earns about 10,000, sorry, about $10 million a year. Mary also earns quite a bit of money, somewhere around $2 million. Then Bobby, Joe, Paul, Melanie, Jill, and Sean, they earn what looks like a small salary, but in reality, it's probably not that small. The issue here is James and Mary are outliers and they skew everything down. So it's not easy to see what these other people earn. So what I'll show you is the same chart, but using a log scale. And you can see how a log scale might help. So in ThinkCell, to change the scale of a chart from linear to log, you click on the axis, right click and click on set logarithmic scale. Once that's done, it has set the log scale. And you can see the multiple is 10. Now it's a little bit clearer if you wanna look at some of the other salaries. So James sits around $10 million. Mary looks like I was wrong. She's probably closer to $1 million. And then Bobby and his friends are all at or below 100,000. But what you can also see is no one is really, really low. Like there's no one earning $1,000 a year. Now log scales, although they're helpful for showing more data, they're not intuitive to read. So Sean, for example, if I look at Sean, I think just naturally he's about $50,000. That's because he looks like he's in the middle of the first access point and the second access point. That's not right though. Let's have a look at what Sean actually earns. I'll just change this to dollars. So Sean earns $33,000, not $50,000. So the lesson here is that log scales are not intuitive. It's actually best to include uh, labels on the data points so that people can easily understand exactly what that data point is, because logs, they're not intuitive. In fact, the other thing I might recommend is instead of choosing a log scale, test whether using a series break would show something very similar in a way that's easier to read. So if I add a series break to our linear scale, I can see here that 
uh, James earns about $9.2, $9.3 million. I can see that Mary is a little bit over a million. And I can see, you know, Joe's over a hundred thousand, Paul's about a hundred thousand. And Sean, actually, now I can see that Sean earns about 30K a year because he sits a third of the way up between zero and a hundred thousand. So another reason why you might want to use a log scale is if the underlying data is exponential. And one example of exponential data is stock prices. So on this slide, I have a chart showing the growth of the S&P 500 over the last 100 years. And this chart uses a linear scale. And there's a couple of things that you should note with this linear scale. The first is that basically from 1920 to 1980, it's very hard to see anything because they've all been pushed down as it's grown over the last 20 or 30 years. The second thing is the dot-com bubble and the GFC both look overrepresented. That's because a percentage change of a larger number looks way more obvious than a percentage change of a smaller number. So for example, um, hypothetically, if the GFC resulted in stock prices dropping by 50% and the Great Depression also saw stock prices drop by 50%, the GFC would be way more obvious and look way more severe because it's coming off a larger number. So instead of using a linear scale, what if we used a log scale? I'll show you what a log scale looks like by right clicking on the axis and clicking set logarithmic scale. And now you can see more detail and the detail is fairly represented across time. So you can see now the Great Depression and how significant that was on the S&P 500. And you can also now compare that to the dot-com bubble and the GFC, which by comparison don't look quite as bad. Of course, they're still bad, but it gives a fair representation of how those things affected the S&P 500 versus the Great Depression. So that's it for log charts. There are a couple of key examples and situations where a log chart is definitely appropriate. However, I'd say don't overuse them. They're very hard to read intuitively for a human. So when you do use them, I would highly recommend labeling your data points. And also on the axis label, note that it's a log axis, just so people are fully aware and it's immediately obvious they're looking at log scale. Hope that was helpful. If you have any questions on log scales, please drop a comment below and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.